Welcome. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's the 2nd of October, 2023. Thanks for being here. We've got, uh, let's see, no Oleg yet. But we do have Kevin Ortons. So topics on the agenda that I've got include uh, upcoming calendar and then news and action items, several items there, and two governance topics is all that I put on. Uh, with Alex not here, Uli, I'd propose we put you as the person to speak to board and government officer elections, if you'd be willing. Yes. <laughs> so Great. And then I've got a topic on Oracle cloud costs, just so that everyone's aware of what the current status is, and then community activity. Are there any other topics that need to go on to our governance agenda today? Okay, then let's go first to the upcoming calendar. So we've got an LTS coming two days from now. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, two weeks from now, not two days, two weeks, October 18. Thanks to Chris Stern acting as the release lead. He's preparing the release candidate. Uh, I think it's due Wednesday. Uh, oh, we've also got one more upcoming item, which is uh, LTS baseline selection. Uh, October 4, 2023. So this week. Uh, major events, the board and officer elections are running now. Any comments on any of those before we go on to the next topics? Okay, then let's take the next thing, which is news. So elections, nominations are now in progress. Uli, I assume that you're receiving nominations. When we get to that point in the agenda, you'll share more with us, I, I assume? Um Actually, uh, I can look uh, into the uh, mailing list or in the, in the community forum, but actually there are not so many <laughs> uh, yeah, election candidates yet, but we have enough, I think. so. Great. Okay, so we're looking for more nominees. I know we're looking for need more registered voters. Right now, the voter registration is, is low and... I think we're going to do, we need to do some active promotion to persuade people to register to vote. Yeah. Great. Next topic then was Cloudflare sponsoring the Jenkins project. So congratulations to the infrastructure team. They've been awarded a sponsorship from Cloudflare, which will host, the intent is to host a major bandwidth consumer on AWS on Cloudflare instead, and thus reduce the AWS costs for the cloud for the the for the Jenkins project. These R two buckets have worldwide distribution facilities, and so we think we're going to get not only better behavior but also lower costs. Thanks to Hervé Lemire and to Damien Duportal for their work on it. And then Java twenty one released two weeks ago. Congratulations to the teams at Oracle, at Red Hat, at Eclipse, at so many places. Um, we haven't yet seen a release from and no date on a release from Eclipse. Temerin has not released their version. Amazon Coretto has released theirs and several others have released theirs, but Eclipse has not yet. Basil, are you still okay with the idea of doing a blog post that summarizes all the different Java stories as we get those settled? Yeah, I think that's good. And I think we're getting more and more agreement too as we get closer to uh October uh between um between you know the uh the administrative monitors and uh the default version and the Docker images. Everything seems to be slowly coming into alignment with this plan. So that'll be good to communicate that later on in this month. Excellent. Thank you. All right, then in terms of a major announcement, Prototype JS will be removed from tomorrow's Jenkins Weekly. 
congratulations to Tim and to Basel and to so many others who've done months and months of work at an amazing level of, of detail to get rid of this 10 plus year old JavaScript library that was felt like it was almost everywhere in Jenkins. Marvelous, marvelous work. The Google Sheet shows the current status. There are still some exceptions. Those exceptions are noted here, and they're mostly from companies that provide plugins that access their services. Thus, those people will be motivated to, to do it when their users start telling them, hey, I can't do this anymore, or something's not working the way I expected. We've contacted each of these. Tim Jacombs reached out. I've reached out. Others. So they're aware of this. And... We hope that they'll they'll comply quickly. By November 15, we're expecting it'll be in the long-term support release. Any questions or concerns about Prototype JS? Oh, thank you, Mark, for merging the chains. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that was a, that was the best feeling. I confess that was a great feeling to, after that. So yeah, that was that was a treat. The sheet really thanks thanks for to everybody who's made so much progress. The sheet is a thing of beauty to look at, right? It just shows, hey, we've made great progress in terms of high usage plugins that were detected with the issue. We even received a blog post update just today from somebody who had detected a new set of patterns to use on this prototype evaluation. So very, very nice. Thanks to the community as a whole. So next piece is the base LTS baseline is selecting, it will be selected on Wednesday. And as far as I can tell, tomorrow's weekly looks like a good choice, but this is a good time to be doing testing. If there's any such time as a good time, this is it. To, beginning tomorrow, we're gonna have a set of code that has all sorts of good in it, including no prototype. Also thanks to John Mark Masson, to Chris Stern, uh, and to all the mentors who are involved in Google Summer of Code, it is now completed. Four projects successful. And the Java 11 end of life monitor will be enabled in tomorrow's weekly build as well. So Java will be end of life October 31 for the Java project for OpenJDK and Tamarin. And Jenkins itself will declare end of September end of life because if we wait till end of October, we have to do it in the middle of an LTS cycle. Any questions or comments on any of those? Yeah, tomorrow's uh, weekly will also have the, the Docker images will uh, default to Java 17. Oh, oh, good. Okay, so we've got and to I be sure I believe also that... the next LTS uh, build will do the same thing. So I think that's going to be 2.0. What's the next LTS? I can't remember the the number now. Yeah, we think it'll be 2.426.1, depending no, on No, I'm talking the... about the next, basically oh, oh. whatever LTS release comes next chronologically. I see, 4.14.3. Yeah, I think that one is also going to have uh, Java 17 as the default uh, in the Docker images, because it, it uses the same code, which is not branched by Good. LTS. So in 2.414.3 and in 2.426, good. And, and that's, that's for users that choose to use a container image that does not include a JDK name in the, in the container image name or in that's the right. container image tag, right? So yeah. if you say, oh, I must have 11, you just use the dash JDK 11 variant. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much, Basel. Anything else on the news section before we get on to action item? Okay, then action items here. And Uli, I think this is a, well, let's see. We could talk to this one more time or I've got another topic later on in the agenda. When would you like to share current status? I think it's right now it's good. It's a little bit uh, uh, strange that we have it three times here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so I think the yeah, not much has been done in the last two weeks. We are just waiting for new nominations for the boards and nominations as a contributor. And as you already mentioned in the beginning, we have I think enough uh, nominees for the as for the positions. 
but not for the yeah, contributors. But yeah, I'm not sure if it's a problem because in Jen we don't have much contributors anymore in Jenkins at all. So th the same is for the people who want to make an election. So I think it's a normal thing when the contributors numbers are going down then the yeah the nomi the people who want to vote are going down as well yeah so encourage fellow contributors to vote right to yeah. register and vote yeah great all right any questions to uli or other uh, anything around election process Okay, so that's the good story. Now the bad stories come on the action items. I've got the action to complete the retrospective on code signing certificate renewal. Still haven't made progress. It'll be at least two more weeks before I make any progress on that. Um, the retrospective document is there and I've started the work on it, gathering various data, but it's not nearly complete enough to, to make a really good retrospective. The other is fix the concept of subprojects and SIGs on Jenkins.io. And again, needs more pull requests. This one we may do as part of um, further, further work on the Jenkins.io site, thanks to Chris Stern's leadership with a Google Summer of Code project that's now looking at when can we switch to use Antora to generate the Jenkins.io site instead of using Ostruct. And then Kevin, we've got one for you on retiring the Jenkins, the Chinese Jenkins site. Anything you want to report there? Um, nothing for me, no, Mark. Thanks. Okay, and I think we've got this is one where we just have to figure out how to insert the redirect and make sure it works as we expect. Okay, and then the last topic is licensing policy and phrasing changes, and I've made no progress there. We had good comments last two weeks ago, reminder from Basel that there are other projects that use, deal with the fact that they may have mixed licenses and we can we could grab their ideas and use those as good concepts, take those to the Linux Foundation lawyers and get their input on which of the patterns should we use as best choice. Anything on any of those action items? Okay, hey, last one is governance topics. And Uli, yes, the third time on the list. Anything else to share there? Not for me. I think I said all, everything. <laughs> okay. So then the last item the, on the governance topics is we had an ongoing email conversation between members of the board um, about a, a sort of a sad story, but it comes with a positive ending. About two and a half years ago, the Jenkins Infra team um, subscribed to an Oracle Cloud promotional program. It was very, very low cost. Think like 90% discount. So very attractive. And it worked great for us for about two years. January of 2023, uh, that or promotional period expired. And I failed to detect that it had expired. And it was on my personal credit card. Um, and it was an expired personal credit card. So it stopped getting paid. And so as a result, they called me by telephone in August and said, hey, you're overdue. So I looked at the billing amount and persuaded CloudBees, hey, would you be willing to donate up to this amount where the amount looks like it would be less than $2,000 total? And CloudBees said, yeah, okay. So we've, we've used that CloudBees corporate card to pay all the invoices that are open to be paid so that they now show us with zero amount due. And thanks to Damian, the infra officer, we've migrated completely off of Oracle by the end of September, 2023. So we're expecting no further charges from Oracle. I'll leave the account open until I get confirmation from Oracle that they agree all invoices are resolved. And right now, the total donation from CloudBees looks like it'll be $1,800 or less. Any questions on that? Okay. Next topics then. 
So Java 11, 17, and 21 in Jenkins, this is the next step of that, of this two plus two plus two diagram that we discussed two weeks ago in, in board meeting. No changes here. It's being implemented now in various ways. The admin monitor, for instance, implements a portion of it and we're going to continue forward. I will create a Jenkins enhancement proposal to describe it a little more formally with the idea that we've got some upcoming dates that are happening according to the plan. Any questions or concerns there? Has anyone found problems with that that we've missed so far? Now this looks good. Okay, great. The next Next item then is the Artifactory Bandwidth Reduction Project. So about six or nine months ago, JFrog contacted us and said, hey, um, the, art, the bandwidth use for repo.jenkinsci.org is out of range. It's just too high. And they asked us to please reduce the bandwidth use. So what we did is a series of log analysis exercises identifying heavy consumers, blocking or altering their behavior, asking them nicely, et cetera. Ultimately, we implemented one change to the configuration where we no longer keep a copy of Maven Central on our own repository. And that happened in September. We now have final log files. I've got to do the, the log file data analysis just to be sure got a really cool tool again thanks to Basel he's got created a tool for us that uploads log files to an SQL database so I can ask SQL queries and it makes it very elegant to do this analysis we think the project's done and we'll close it out within a week or so I think Any it's, questions? it's already been closed out on the jfrog side right yes yeah their their answer is hey you're done and and our answer is we're done except we'd really like to see the data that proves that we're done Last item is Hacktoberfest has started. Now, this is probably a good one to ask to board members who are involved in the community uh, in dealing with code specifically. John Mark Messon has sent the announcement. We've got friendly lists in various ways. Has the impact on you been okay from Hacktoberfest or are you getting spammy or noisy Hacktoberfest contributions. Is it any worse this year than last year? Is it any better? Um, maybe let's, Uli, you're probably a, a good first one to ask. What's your experience been? Yeah, actually I have two or three people who are trying to solve some issues, but they try to solve one code issue and one CSS. You know, okay, CSS is also code, but you're not really. <laughs> so it's more something for styling. And they are asking questions, good questions, and they are starting the pull requests. Um, the, actually, the most, uh, the main problem is that these people normally do not have Jenkins installed on their machine. So they ask, they want to implement something, but they don't know Jenkins at all. So this is a little bit complicated to get them running because they need to install Jenkins first and need to understand what can be done with Jenkins. So, but this was in the last year, the same. Uh, I have a lot of, I had a lot of students uh, who did not know Jenkins and did not know what to do with Jenkins or with continuous integration. And so it takes the month <laughs> to get them ready. But this is good, I think, for uh, Google Summer of Code. So we have enough time to get them running. Good. Thank you. Okay. So I, what I'm hearing, I think, is, okay, we're only two days in. So it's not a not a huge sample, but it sounds like it's no worse than years past. You're seeing com comparable patterns to past years where, hey, brand new contributor doesn't know Jenkins, wants to do something, and hits the initial bumps. Okay, Basel, anything from you? Uh, I haven't seen as many uh, as many people doing it this year as before, uh, but in, the, in that sense, there's less overall activity. So that also means less, both less noise and less signal to answer your question indirectly. 
Thank you. Yeah, well, and that matches with my observation. I think less noise and less signal is are both both accurate. There is, I've not seen nearly the noise level that we had in past years of spammy things arriving on the on the other side. Also, not the not the number of contributors we've had. Now we did different things this year, right? We didn't do an online meetup to get people started. We didn't do a major push. This was a much, much lighter effort this year than we've done in past years. Bruno or Kevin, anything that you want to observe? Kevin, particularly in documentation, has there been anything that you've seen that was Hacktoberfest sort of spammy or Hacktoberfest distracting? Uh, I haven't seen anything spammy or distracting coming through yet, Mark. I did see uh, one user who was uh, interested in doing some of the UI and components updates um, from the pull request we had last year there were, there were a lot of changes made but um uh yeah no nothing um inappropriate or spammy great and bruno anything from you uh, i haven't seen any pull request yet on the few uh repos i'm trying to maintain so um, no effect from active for the time being the only thing i've seen is a lot quite a lot of people asking for some help where do i start and so on in Gitter, and most of the time you're the one who answer uh, mark but no for the time being nothing major but like the others i didn't go into the forums twitter or linkedin whatever say hey it's open come on we have lots of issues to solve please come in so no good okay great thank you maybe All right. another addition um, what I noted uh, in the GitHub channel, a lot of people are coming to the Google Summer of Code channel and asking, hey, I want to contribute to open source and Jenkins, but they don't know Jenkins. So this is really a little bit silly. So when you try to participate in Google Summer of Code, you should know Jenkins. At least you should know where you can, yeah, make something new or something like that so and I, I think that's a that's a practical thing that we had seen last year as well right one is that um hacktoberfest is gsoc prep for many of these people right it is gsoc preparation and we use it as that as well mm -hmm. but then the other is it means that there's there's lots to learn about jenkins in order to contribute, right? And you won't make a good proposal for G for Google Summer of Code if you don't know Jenkins. It's just not possible. You've got to know the thing you're trying to improve. Good insight. Yeah, I don't know in, in which channel, sorry to interrupt Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes, I had this very same question on channeling on Gitter and I didn't hear the image from Jean-Marc, you know, build your Jenkins muscle, but the idea was there Yes, of course, Hacktoberfest is a good way to learn about Jenkins and um, build your knowledge so that if ever you want to make a proposal for GSOC 2024, your proposal will be of a, a better quality than if you just started from scratch next March. Right. Good. Thank you. Any other observations? Okay, then let's go ahead. We'll call in our, any other topics for today. Okay, we'll call an end for today's meeting. Thanks very much, everyone.